Hi YouTube, Roy Marco with Roy Marco's Garage coming to you today uh, with my Metropolitan. We're going to go out with the Weird Little Car Club and my buddy Fred and we're going to head out uh, to Legends Golf Course which is just northeast of Edmonton and uh, Ron Lyons here had wrote a book on uh, the history of the golf carts and all the different golf carts and stuff and he's got all of these golf carts in his museum and as far as uh, I'm aware, uh, he's got the only museum for golf carts, uh, at least in, in uh, North America. So we're going to go check out his collection, and uh, we're going to meet the guy who published this book and tell you how to get one. So let's hit the road. So yeah, we're on our way out, and the uh, car's driving good. It's a nice day. I think it's plus 26 today. So uh, that's a good day for a drive. If you ever watch Curiosity Inc, this is where uh, Alex takes his car to get fixed. This is my favorite golf cart here so far. <laughs> huh? Corvette Merlin, 1963, I want to see. Three or four have the hood and side notes like this. Being a convertible, it's hard to tell what it's going to This is uh, very unique here. This is cool. What do you think about this, Fred? Love it. There is one golf cart that is um, based on a BMW i7, and that's this one here. And uh, in his book, he talks about that the Kennedys actually had one of these. And this is based on a BMW i7 chassis and engine. And so basically, this thing would do the same speed as a BMW i7. And it's for very wealthy golfers. Uh, but he'll tell you more about that. And then there's a Metro in the back corner, which is pretty cool. This is a Metro Smith car, uh, it basically opens up to the side, you get in like a cockpit and an airplane, and it is a two-seater, uh, you get one sitting one in front of the other, and uh, the engine's in the rear, it's a small little uh, engine in the back, and um, it's a three-wheel car, yeah, and even the steering wheel, if you come and look, it looks like a, a cockpit for an airplane, it's pretty cool, like a... This is very cool. This looks like the kind of uh, golf cart where you had a, a chauffeur or a caddy drove it and then the golfer sat up front. So uh, you, had a, you had the person driving, wasn't the person sitting up here. That's kind of interesting. Cushman. I've heard the name before. Did they do the tap, uh, the, uh, pay, uh, the pay parking meters? Cushman. It might have been, yeah. It might have been the same. Oh, oh, they had the little motorcycles. No, that's it. The yeah. Cushman motorcycle yeah. from the 1950s.
This is uh, all the different kind of chargers that they would have for charging electric golf carts. Just an arrangement of them. I don't know the ages and that, but anyway, there it is. Kids, oh my god, right? yeah. crazy. Right? Yeah, that's what it looked like when I got it. Right? Yeah. That's a lot of them kind of they came to look, came to look in a little worse for the wear. Where, where did you find them? Just all over the place? Yeah, or? yeah. I put about 125,000 miles, 145,000 miles getting them here. Whether it's either shipping or I did a lot of road trips. I go buy four, three, four, had a big trailer. Bring them back, because that way I could justify it. Yeah. There's 800 to ship them, and then, uh, eight, and then if I got four, I'd break even out of all the holidays. <laughs> Yes, that's, that's, a, that's a 300, right? And then this one they marketed as the golf cart of the rich and famous. I see. First that. one JFK, and second one Frank Sinatra. Well, is that right? Yeah. yeah. There's a picture of JFK with all the kids flat on. On this, like in here, and in the book, right? Yeah. You notice your book is uh, your book is hundred pound uh, deluxe copy, right? Yeah, I paid more. Right? You did, yeah. That was uh, it was like twenty five or something. Yeah. I do autograph. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That brings the price down a little bit, right? Yeah. When it's, when it's so this is Rod Lyons. He's uh, the the one who put all this together. He uh, restored, got these golf carts restored and things like that. And uh, he's the author of of this book. Uh, golf car bus and uh, 1949, 1969. And uh, so, can you tell us anything about the book that you'd like to? Work? Well, the book, the book was actually a work in progress. It took about seven years to compile all the information. Right? I did a lot of legwork research on you know, the different golf cars that were out there, and then I slowly built the collection. And what drug, what made the book drag out more was every time I think I put, I had you know definitive. A number of cars now for the book. I'd find another one. Then right. we'd have to we'd have to punt the pages ahead and yeah. redo it. And yeah, so it took so. about seven years. Yeah. Seven years, and it's 320 color pages. I think I talked to you before. You were saying that this is the only uh, golf cart sort of museum in all of North America, or in the world. In the world, yeah, so the only, the world. of any significance. There's a few guys that have you know small collections, that, but this is easily the biggest and the most comprehensive. Yeah. What's uh, your What's the one golf cart in here that you had to travel the furthest to get? Um, the, well, the dumbest road trip I went on. There was a guy. He was. There was. I went from Edmonton to the tip of Maine, right out on the Coney, or whatever that. You know, you go yeah. way out to uh, it, was, it was called uh, Provident, Provincetown, Maine, and I drove from here and I picked up the last golf cart made. So the round trip was 9,950 kilometers. Wow. So that was, the, that was the longest. But I did several of them, several around maybe, maybe like 2,500, 3,000. Right. And I pick up three or four golf carts, do the West Coast, line them up and then pick them up. And that was the way you could keep the price. Well, that would be good, yeah. yeah. And how does somebody get a book like this? Can they get it on Amazon? Um, I wouldn't buy it on Amazon. I get a hold of me personally. No person. Because of, You'll get a much better deal. Either you can contact me through the golf course, okay. which is www.legendsgolf.ca, or I have a website, it's called golfcarclassics.com. Okay. But if you, you better get a hold of me first because I sell them for 25 They sell for 49 US on Amazon and 39 US on our website because that's where the books are uh, stationed. Right? But I have a bunch of books here that I can sell for like 25 bucks a book.
Price, okay. Canadian, man. Price, okay, cool. Sounds good. We'll get a hold of Rob here. Or Take less. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> What's your favorite golf cart here? I don't know. Sorry, just, I, mean, I like the little Bob Hope guy a lot. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, like the, I just like, you know, and then this one is actually, I like the fact you go 60 miles an hour. Well, You're the big boy, right? Yeah. <laughs> on this one. I only drove it once, and that was from the workshop over there. I worked out in the wintertime in our main shop, and I drove it over here, back to the park, and it's never run again, right? I know, I know the first thing that will happen is it'll blow up as soon as I take it out again, right? Well, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank Take you care. boys All for right. coming. Right? Cool. Yeah, so Golf Cart Classics, pick it up. Yeah. It's a good book. There's a lot of cool stuff that showed up today. Uh, I used to have a little Pontiac Firefly convertible. This is the Chevy Sprint version, and they also made a Geo Metro. It's a nice little car. Uh, great little cars. Um, up here in Canada, they rusted out pretty good. 1965 Corvette convertible. Another car you pulled up in, rounded. And... Uh, some other beauties back here. It looks to be a 58 Corvette. Here. Yeah. No, that that's a cart cover. And uh, this is like a BMW Isetta with uh, another door at the back, so it holds four people. And that was uh, a BMW 600. It had a bigger engine and all that kind of stuff, but you still have the front seat you loaded in in the front here. And I don't remember which country, but some of these cars did not have a roof that would open. But in some countries, it was mandatory to be able to sell the car as a second exit. If the car was in front collision, to be able to get out, you had to have a second exit. So they, they, it was mandatory for the roof to slide. But some of them had solid roofs. I just can't remember which, which country it was that had to have it like that. So. And then a 54 Corvette. 53 and 4 look the same. This has the same sort of engine as what's in my Pontiac except well this is a 235 cubic inch blue frame six cylinder and at one time admittingly this was my favorite Corvette uh, even though they didn't have side glass I just thought it was such a cool car and I would love to own one but probably five six would be or 56 sorry 56 and 7 would be my favorite year of Corvette now if I could ever afford one but I could live with a 58 to 62 I like the first First gen Corvettes there. So, anyway, that's a neat little collection of cars just in this little garage over here. And uh, if you ever get a chance and you're in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and you want to check this museum out, take a look at the uh, website there. And uh, I'll put a link in the description below and uh, check this out. All kinds of neat stuff. So, yeah, the weird little car club was here and we had a good little meeting, had hot dogs and food and uh, Good little visit and got to see the museum, so a lot of cool things, things I didn't even get to cover. Okay, well there you have it. This is uh, sitting in a Metro Smith here that showed up to the event. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and everything. And uh, But I, as cool as this car is, I'd love to own one. This is really unique. It'd probably be a great experience. I think I'll go home in my car. But uh, anyway, if you please, uh, if you like, please subscribe and have a great day.